Okay, so I'd like to do that companion problem to the one that I'd done in class. So you recall that in class we had a lead and then we had another lead somewhere maybe around here, right? And then we um, wanted to find the um, resistance of some element that went from this lead uh, to this lead. And in class what we did is we had um, this region have a different conductivity. So I said that I had another problem that where we have a constriction here. Basically what we're doing is we've got uh, different size circular cross sections here, right? And so basically this is going to get narrow and then get wider again and that's going to cause some uh, additional resistance in this particular, uh, in this particular uh, device. Uh, and that's going to serve as my representation. Um, now we want to identify the features of the problem that are important, right? Um, in this case, what we want to do, you know, something like this, is we would like to compare this to what, ha what would happen if we didn't have it, right? So um, first we have to worry about just any old nanoscale device um, that, that has, say, these, this sort of construction. Now it can't be too small. Okay, I don't want it to be too small because if it's very, very small, then this thing's going to um, run into something like a Coulomb blockade or something like that. That's not what we want to do. We don't want to look at those sorts of effects. We just want to look at the basic sort of resistance stuff where this could be any old sized, any old sized wire. Uh, this should be perfectly fine um, with the values that I'm going to use if you have a 100 nanometer device, for example. Uh, probably would not be okay if you had a, um, I don't know, a three nanometer device. And definitely wouldn't be okay if you had a one nanometer device. So um, we'll, look, we'll look at this and um, hopefully uh, we can learn a little bit of something about it. So we want to have a nanoscale device. All right. And that device is uh, just a wire. Uh, it has some sort of conductivity, right? Like I said, we're going to use G for the conductivity for two reasons. One is because we're going to use sigma for some other reasons, right? And for some other some other factors, and they could come up in the same problems. In fact, they do come up in at least two of the problems that I've given you. And um, two, the uh, and to this is actually used quite a bit. Most of the professional literature that I've read where people have actually used the conductivity when I've had to use, use it, you know, it's basically been sig it's basically been G that's used for the conductivity, not sigma. So I think that's probably, that probably is a good, I, that probably makes it a good idea to stay with the G and um, not use that sigma and I have no idea why that shows up so much in the books other than it in physics 1 and 2 that might give you some trouble. And you, you know we've got we've got this thing and where the constriction isn't there well first it's got a height d and where there's no constriction it's got a radius a. So the device has it um, that way both devices have it that way since we're going to look at two and um, we would have one device with a constriction. So I probably should have done this a little bit differently, but hey. So that constriction is right here at the center. So the center of the constriction is at the center of the um, device, right? And um, actually this is a parabola. And so that center is at d over 2. We'll leave that and then its width is a one I'm going to have be one-third of the device. So since it's one-third of the device that's d over 3. Now I could have just given you w and said we'll put the center wherever we want. Yeah, that would have been fine too but uh, we'll, we'll leave this here. This will give us some numbers actually at the end that we'll have to calculate with the calculator. I know that's troubling. I, we try to stay away from calculators in this class, but um, from time to time it's good to remember how to actually punch things in, into those uh, calculators. I mean, when you, when you went into 
calculus one and you had to buy those giant calculators I mean that you you shelled out seventy five hundred dollars for them you may as well use them now and again um let's see and what do we want to find we want to find the difference in the resistance or the change in resistance with the constriction which is going to be delta r the difference between the um, two resistances we'll probably also do that as a, in a percentage basis so we'll probably look at delta r over r0 r0 is going to be the um, one guy here without a constriction all right and given that i've said resistance about 15 times already the concept is probably got something to do with resistance um, and we'll use our modified um, equation that we derived in class for the uh, for building up a resistance r equals the integral from zero to d uh, g to the minus one which is the resistivity over a both of these technically are functions of the distance from uh, you know distance along here um, and remember, we, we could have used a path integral to find the, um, could have used a path integral and the definition of the current density J, and we could have gotten this the same way that we got it in class before. Let's just stay ourselves a couple of steps and use, and use this equation. It'll be fine. If you want to do it the other way, the nasty part of the integral that we're going to do later is still the same integral, and you get to do that same nasty integral. So doesn't matter which which way you do it the nastiest part of this problem stays whether you use this equation or the slightly more complicated one so let's just be easy on ourselves because we are going to have a, um, a rather unusual integral coming up that um, is possible to integrate it's it's possible to integrate it's actually not that that hard as long as you have like an integral table um, or Wolfram Alpha or something like that. Okay, so I'm going to break this up into three parts. All right, there's nothing really fancy schmancy about this problem, but it is going to be long, and so we're going to start off by finding the easy things. And so that's going to be part one. Uh, these are actually so easy, I probably ought to just do them right away here. I don't have it on my notes, but I probably ought to just do them right away. Because we can use this that same old um, wire resistance formula that you used in uh, Physics 3. It'll be not a problem. So the first easy thing is find R0, the resistance without the constriction. And uh, then we'll need some other thing, uh, find the end resistances. Find uh, our end resistance at the end of the main wire. Okay. So we'll find those two things. I mean, you can see that this is just a single application. It's almost just the definition, in fact. So we don't have very much to work with, worry about there. Uh, part two is going to be, um, well, we're going to worry about this geometry right here, right? There's a lot of geometry in setting up this integral. We're going to have to do it, and we're going to have to do it right. So we're just going to have to take our times it take our time and um, not rush it okay don't rush the geometry it, it won't be rushed I mean you just have to get it right geometry is one of these things that is very important in physics if there's a geometrical factor you better get it right and you better know how to um, use it and so we're going to um, just have to find the equation for the parabola And and that should be reasonably um, that should be reasonably reasonable. Uh, probably I oh I've probably got enough room here, so I don't think we'll have that much of a problem. But we could uh, when I go through that list of things to do. And the third part 
uh, will be um, to actually find the resistance using that integral. All right. And I guess it says find constriction resistance, but we'll also finish that up with um, finding the actual answer. So we start with the easy things, right? Which is find um, the resistance of of this um, other wire that's just a straight line of the same radius as this. Uh, then we'll find um, these end cap er end cap resistances, which are really just the same resistances as this part here of that wire. Uh, then we'll have to work on this parabola, all right? And in finding that parabola, um, I'm just going to start out by writing the correct equation for a parabola. So I'll just write it in general, and after we have it in general, we can start adding things. Uh, first thing is we add known points. So there's, there are actually two of these constants are going to, there are three constants for a parabola, and two of these constants we're going to know off the top of our heads. We're going to be able to look at what we've written down here, um, and we'll be able to um, put those directly in the parabola. That's good. So we'll only have one complicated part. Um, and, that, and to do that, we'll have to sub find that we'll have to substitute at the edge. Okay, we're going to find, we know this point, so we can get two of our known constants from this point. We'll need um, to find the third by looking at this point and um, using a little bit of algebra. Uh, so that'll find, to find the last constant. Substitute at the edge to find the last constant. And we're getting pretty close. All we have to do then is, what am I going to call this? Number six, number six. Uh, and then we'll just rewrite everything correctly. Rewrite the equation with um, numerical constants. So I'm going to minimize any sort of dependence on anything and stuff like that. Uh, it'll be fun, you'll like it, believe me. Um, so now that we have all that, then we have to go and find the constriction resistance. So we have these, all the rest of these resistance things, we have this parabola part, which is going to let us, um, let us find the area, which is the next thing we do. We're going to find the area of the cross section that we're going to integrate across. Uh, uh, we're going to integrate through the, through this cross section. We're going to find the air, uh, equation for the area of all these little cross sections here. Um, so after we have that, uh, we're ready to set up the integral. And when I set it up, I'll also do some simplification so that we um, so that it's easier to do the integral, right? Well, th the integral is going to look messy, and we can use some very simple use substitution sort of things to get it into an equation that doesn't look messy, but it's still not something that you're used to, used to working with. But you should be able to do things with equations you haven't seen other people use before. I mean, that's th you've had three semesters of calculus, you've had um, plenty of other classes. You should be able to do an integral you've never seen before. Um, so then we want to uh, integrate. Oh, yeah, we set, we set up the integral, we'll integrate it. And that's the part that's actually using all the, well, actually, that's not. But we'll integrate, we'll have some, um, we'll have some rather dense looking thing after that. Um, with lots of numbers that are kind of funny looking. So we'll also want to, after that, clean that up by calculating a numerical constant. And that'll be nice. Like I said, um, 
it'll make things easier uh, because, you know, unless you know, like, the arc tangent of the square root of 2 off the top of your head, it's not going to mean anything. And it probably won't even if you do. Um, so then we'll find the um, total resistance of, of this uh, second device, of the device with the um, constriction, because up to this point we've only found one third of it. We have these two other bits over here. And finally, um, we'll find delta R and delta R over R, uh, which will be something that we can do without any additional work. Um, so that's how we're going to do it. We're going to find a couple of easy things, then we'll work on our parabola, and then we'll work on doing the actual integral. So let's right now do the easy things. They're ready, they're ready for us. They're, they're wanting to um, be solved. So, like I said, we just use our old friendly equation from um, from physics three, which had you know the resistance being the resistivity times the length, right? And the length in this case is d over the area of your wire. And this is in, in this case the area is circular, so it's pi a squared. Uh, that was that was pretty complicated, um, and then for these um, end end parts here, it's actually just one third of that, right? Um, and you can look at it either as instead of d here you have d over three, or you can just say it's one third of that. So you end up with g to the minus one d over three pi a squared. And we're, we're going to add two of those onto this, so two-thirds g, g minus 1d over pi a squared um, for that. But probably we'll just get to the point where we're using r0 as a constant. So this is one-third r0, like I said. So um, now we're going to find that equation for the parabola, and after that we'll find the constriction resistance. And after we found the constriction resistance, we'll add in that two-thirds, and we'll start doing subtractions and divisions and all that other fun stuff that I know you love. Okay, so we're going to deal with this um, fairly simple uh, looking problem. Uh, it's going to be a little bit fun to do, but I know if there's one thing my students like, it's to have fun, and fun is defined as a big nasty integral. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to look at um, this sort of device, right? We've, which is a, um, which is just a wire of a circular cross section, but it has this constriction, so it remains a circular cross section, right? But, but even though it remains a circular cross section, um, it reduces and that reduction is parabolic in nature uh, so that we can do something with it. So, you know, looking at it in this direction isn't very useful, but if we looked at it in um, this direction, right, everything is pretty um, simple, right? So we let's look at it in this direction. Uh, this will help us with our goal for today or for, for this section, for this piece of paper, which is to find the, the equation for the parabola. And to find the parabola so we can actually use it to help us with our integral. Okay, so we've got this, we've got these two regions where there is no constriction and we've already taken care of those in the previous um, piece of paper. And then we've got this area here with the constriction. And that's what we're going to look at now. Um, and so we've already said that the rate to uh, large radius here is a, and the minimum radius here is a over three, one third of that. So it's fairly deep as far as constriction is concerned. Um, and it starts at d over three, it ends at two d over three. So it's one third of the um, total length and its center, obviously, from all that is d over 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to use um, this point and this point to find all three of the um, 
parameters that we're going to use for a parabola. So we have um, four things to do on this piece of paper. One is just to write the equation of the parabola. We're just going to write the equation for a parabola in general. And um, we're going to use, there are a couple of forms of that. We're going to use the one that I think is um, simplest and the one that I think is most intuitive. Okay, and I'll just go ahead and write that right now. That's the radius, that's, what we, that's what's parabolic, is equal to some constant a plus some constant c times x minus b squared. And you say, well, Dr. Ranchler, why is that so simple? Why is that so intuitive, right? So this is our radius here, right? Um, why is this particular um, way of writing this so simple? Well, if you look at this, the minimum, the minimum size that this can happen have is a, right? So a here is your minimum radius. Well, that's pretty nice because we already know what that is, right? We are, we already said that's a over three, and then this constant here is the position of the minimum radius. Oh, well that's nice, because we already said that the minimum was here at d over 2. I mean, this part 4 here, um, to find um, known points, we've already done, right? Just by saying, well, what do these, these names mean? We don't have to do any real work at all there. And then this part C, that's going to be something like the curvature. I don't know what its real name is. It's not, curvature has something to do with a giant circle, not with, um, not with the parabola, but it's pretty close. It'll be close enough for us to call that the curvature of the parabola. Um, and then we wanna find some known points, and known points. And like I said, we already found that this big A is equal to little a over three, and this big B is equal to D over two, all right? And remember, this is D. So it's really, really simple so far. Uh, the next part is the part where we're going to have a little bit of um, work, and that's going to be um, substituting at this point here at the edge. And what we're going to do that for, for that is um, we need that third point, we need that um, additional point to find this third um, value C. All right, so we'll just have to spend some, some time there to find um, C, just like that. So then we want to rewrite the equation of the parabola, and that'll take a couple of steps, but we'll have done the hard, hard work. This will just be making things as simple as possible, making, you know, reducing um, as many things to dimensionless quantities as possible so that the, the integral that we're going to do, that you're looking forward to doing, I know you're looking forward to it. I know it's something that, you know, you're just enraptured in, in this part because you want to know how it relates to that part. Um, so, we want to rewrite this um, so that it's mo the most useful it can be in doing the um, integral. And that will involve me turning into a dimensionless quantity. In case you hadn't noticed, that's what they always do to you in, um, in math classes. They have everything in dimensionless quantities. They just don't mention that they're dimensionless quantities. And so sometimes what they're actually giving you looks a little bit funny to a physicist. Um, so let's go on to find this. So we're going to say, all right, what is r at d over 3? Well, that is with this big A equal to a over 3, and c, which is equal to x minus, or c times this x minus um, b thing, which is d over 2 squared, that's all equal to a, all right? So that's not, um, that doesn't look like it's too hard. I think what the first thing I'll do is I'll subtract this um, a over 3 from both sides and um, make this substitution, which I should have done along the way, which is uh, d over 3 here. Okay. 
So we'll go ahead and calculate this and we will um, subtract that thing out. So d, or d minus 3, d over 3 over d minus 2 is d over 6 squared times c is equal to a minus a over 3, which is 2a over 3. Okay. And then we can do the amazing, divide by um, d over 6 squared. So we have 2a over 3 times 6 over d squared, which is equal to 72, what, 36 times 2 is 72 thirds times a over d squared which in fact is equal to 24a over d squared. So now we know what all three of those numbers are. A, B, C, all there for us to use. So let's just put them all back into the parabola equation uh, so we can use it and get on with our lives. Get on to the good stuff, get on to the fun stuff, get on to the integral. Yeah, that, that sounded so cool. Anyways, 24a over d squared times um, x minus d over 2 squared. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to get as much of, remove as many of these a's and d's as possible. And what I'll do, first of all, is I can't get rid of all of them, obviously. There's nothing multiplied by that a. So I'm going to pull that a over 3 out. So we have a over 3 times 1 plus. So I've got an a over 3. That means I've got, uh, I pulled out 3 over a here, right? I think that's right. Um, then I've got my 24a over d squared here to deal with. Uh, you, you can see we're already cruising with our um, cancellations, right? Um, then we have this part. Like I said, I want to uh, make this dimensionless. So I'm going to pull out a minus d over 2 and square it. And um, then I'll be left with under here 1 minus 2x over d. Okay. 2x over d. And that's squared. Okay. That's almost what I want for my radius. All I have to do is go through here, right? We've got d squared. That's nothing, right? So we have 1 plus 72 over 4. 72 over 4 is 18 um, times 1 minus 2x over d squared. And that is the radius we're going to use in the integral that is coming up. I hope, I hope you think that's as cool as I do, because that's really cool. You, I, I know you like that. See you in a second. Okay, now with a new sheet of paper, we'll draw this out one more time. So what we're trying to do here is look at this particular um, system. I've got a load and, or not a load, a lead. Um, load is for the next problem. Uh, I've got a lead and I've got a um, wire here with constriction. And I've modeled that constriction parabolically in the previous, um, the previous sheet. Uh, and I want to compare this to just a nice straight wire of otherwise similar dimensions. So basically without the constriction, okay? Um, now what I said was that we ended up with a function for the radius in this parabolic constriction region of um, something like the radius is a over 3, where a is this radius here, right? Plus um, some constant, um, yeah, I plus some constant times some stuff, but I pulled the a out of 3 out, so it was 1 plus 18, 1 minus um, 2x over d squared, okay? And so that was, that was this. So the radius of this lead was r0, 
and that was equal to um, g to the minus 1d over pi a squared. And each one of these bits here, this one and this one, uh, these each contribute one-third of that. So the r at the ends is equal to one-third r0. Okay, and we just have to figure out how much this contributes, and that way we can find the difference between these different. Um, we can find the difference between these two different situations. Um, and how we're going to start that, it, or how we're going to do that, is we're going to look at this equation that I derived in class, and this doesn't exist in the book. It doesn't exist in the book because, um, well, when I did your homework problem, like I said, I used a um, line integral. And the line integral will not save you. You'll end up doing exactly this same integral. Um, but, uh, but I, like I said in class, I did this because it's sort of become sort of the process that I did to create this um, equation is something that we've done over and over in discussing different sort of um, in, in discussing different sort of effects throughout the um, class, so it's actually become kind of a theme, and it w wasn't expect I wasn't expecting that when I was doing all of your homework over the summer, but um, but now uh, you know we've been doing it, and we can use this, and so even though there are some constraints on this, and I urge you to go over your notes to remember what the constraints on actually being able to use this equation are. Um, it, this equation um, is is something we can use as a kind of uh, as a kind of substitute for the equation that we use up here, which is basically the um, plain old uh, equation that for designing you know, the resistance of a wire that you got in um, physics three. So we'll look at this one instead. Um, using the area that we got from this uh, resistor. Okay, so now we have to go through this entire um, series of steps that I promised you. And let's see, where are we? We're, so this is part three. Uh, find constriction, find the constriction resistance. Okay, so so this is where we're going to this is where we're going to go. Um, so the first thing we need to do for that is to find the area of the constriction. This is not going to be particularly hard. Um, it's really just squaring some stuff. Uh, after that, um, we're going to go ahead and set up our integral, which will include a little bit of um, simplification. Uh, let's see. That will well, that will actually involve a few steps. Um, then we'll, we're going to have to perform the integral. I'm going to basically just use a result from. Um, from Wolfram, uh, I don't really think that trying to go any farther with this integral will be um, really interesting. Probably we could figure out how to do it if we really wanted to, but this isn't calculus two. Um, and when we, after we perform the inter integral, we'll need to do a little bit of um, punching stuff in. Um, the calculator, so we'll, we'll find a numerical constant that way. Um, that's not something I really like to do very much, but every once in a while it's good. Um, and after we're, do, we're done with that, we can go ahead and um, find the resistance. And below that, uh, and below that, we'll be able to find um, find delta r and um, delta r over r naught. What we actually want to find, but finding the resistance is 
basically the end of the difficult math and the rest of it's just dividing and subtracting and other you know wonderful things that I know you you miss from um, other classes okay so the area the area not um, particularly difficult right the area is a function of X is just pi times um, a squared which is equal to where where is my a or r squared excuse me and r is this thing so we, this constant is one ninth pi little a squared and then we square this stuff in here one plus eighteen one minus two x over d squared and that thing squared all right and then we have to throw that into this equation for when we set up our integral um, and that has r is equal to 0 to d integral from 0 to d g to the minus 1 of um, of x technically but there's no x there um, times 9 over pi a squared 1 over um, 1 plus 18 times 1 minus 2x over d squared squared and actually that becomes a dx and we're all good with that uh, actually it's not 0 to d recall we're going from here to here so that's um, d over 3 to 2d over 3 excuse me Okay, so now we want to move to um, another another coordinate. We'll, we'll go ahead and simplify this. So we'll do that u substitution, I guess they call it, but I always use c. So I'm going to use c because it's dimensionless. I like to use the Greek letter. That was 1 minus 2x over d, right? Um, so let's see. These things can just come out. 9g to the minus 1 pi a squared and then I plug this these numbers into here so I have uh, for d over 3 I have 1 minus 2 thirds basically right so that's 1 third and for um, 2d over 3 I have 1 minus 4 thirds so that's minus one third and we have to find figure out what to do with um, this thing so uh, excuse me this is down here is 1 plus 18 1 minus 2x over d oh well I wonder why I chose c to be equal to that and then we square that so this is basically the thing we have to integrate what we have to do as well though is we have to figure out what to do with this dx. So if our dc is equal to minus 2 over d dx, then dx is equal to minus d over 2 dc. So we have minus d over 2 dc here. Okay, everything's looking um, pretty good. And this is a form we can actually um, integrate with. Uh, so, I mean, I guess another couple of things that we could do here uh, is um, we can flip this over, get rid of that negative sign, and then we can say this is a, um, you know, this is an even function, so we can integrate from, we're perfectly happy integrating from 0 to 1 third, and then multiplying um, this, this whole thing by 2, which can get rid of that too. So we just pull that d out, so we have 9 g to the minus 1 d pi a squared interval from 0 to 1 third of um, 1 plus 18 c squared squared um, dc okay so now we can talk to Wolfram Wolfram will tell us well okay we can put our 9 out here still we can um, still we can actually go ahead and Put the r0 in for this um, this expression now right um, 
and when we actually do that integral, the integral would look like look something like um, one twelfth times um, six c over eighteen c squared plus one. Okay. Um, and then we'd also have to add in a square root of 2 times the arctangent and just this once we'll use tangent to the minus 1 of uh, the square root of 3, I think, or this, yeah, this 3 times the square root of 2 times c. And that's evaluated at 0 and 1 third. And that's pretty nice because the c zero makes this zero, and c the arctangent of zero is zero. So actually, zero the zero part doesn't really matter. So we're in one of those nice things. Um, this guy becomes three quarters r zero, right? Um, one third here makes that um, one one third of six. That's two. And one third here is one ninth, so that's two plus one, which is three. So we have two thirds plus the square root of two times the arctangent of minus the arctangent of one third of this is the square root of two. And that's that's literally what what we have. That is really the answer. We're perfectly fine with that. We don't need to um, go on from here really except there's one small tiny little problem and that is uh, you look at that number and you don't really know how big it is. It could be big, it could be small, it could be broad, it could be tall. Uh, I mean it's it's just a uh, it's just a bunch of numbers, right? And an arctangent and you kind of got an idea of what this is. You don't really have an idea of what that is unless you use a lot of these arctangents. And uh, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, but um, probably you haven't. So we'll go ahead and let's just make all of these things um, into numerical constants. So we have 0 0.75 for that. We'll, we'll put the R0 away at the end. 0 0.667 here plus um, 1.414 times the arctangent of the square root of 2, which is um, times 0 0.955 um, R0. Okay, so that's a bunch of numbers. And if you type it into your calculator, you'll get something disturbing that you don't really want to look at, which is 1.513 times R0. So I told you, you really don't like numbers. Numbers don't really help you most of the time. Um, but hey, we'll, um, we'll be able to get something out of this eventually. So the total resistance, uh, so this is actually the resistance of the middle. So the total resistance is R, R is equal to um, two, twice the resistance of the ends um, plus the resistance of the middle. Uh, which is 1.513 plus twice of one third, which is, well, we've got another 0 0.667 to play with, times R0, uh, which is equal to, um, and my sheet where I calculated this out beforehand fell down, uh, 2.1. R0. Okay, so by writing this with in terms of R0, we've done something good, which means we can say, well, our delta R is equal to 2.180 minus 1, right? 0 0.000, if we want to do that. R0, which is 1.180 R0. Um, so obviously, we're more than twice as large, right? We, I mean, we already saw that. That's that's not amazing. Um, in fact, with delta R over R zero, we just have one point one eight zero, which is a hundred and eighteen percent 
which is reasonably large. Okay, so that, so that constriction is a really important thing. It gives us a really large boost in our resistance. Um, I don't know. I don't know what you could use this for, but uh, I just wanted to show you again the other way, the other part of this, right? So we could use both of these at the same time. We could use one or the other, and we could always just um, uh, do something different. Again, this equation is good in very specific circumstances. Uh, I did not include the extension for this um, area because I don't believe that the circumstances are ever actually um, are ever actually varied when you have this uh, the um, conductivity changing. I don't I, I don't I don't think that's really ever going to be true except when the conduct conductivity is uniform or the conductivity um, is either kind of toggles on and off. It's either zero or G, right? Um, in which case you should get something that's, which you should get something that's reasonably similar to some stuff you that you saw in physics three, but we don't need to get into that in detail. So I'm just about out of time according to my um, videotape thing. So I think I'm done with this and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I do. And I hope you really know how to do it because I know at least one other place where you'll see it in the future. All right. Uh, talk to you later. Bye.